most people think of chest, the first thing that usually comes to mind is the bench press. If you've never heard the question, how much do you bench, then you probably never spent that much time in and around the gym. Although the bench press is a very important exercise to include in any chest program, there's a lot more knowledge needed to be gained to maximize hypertrophy for chest development. To understand how to train the chest effectively, we must first have an understanding of its anatomy. The chest is divided into two sections. The first section is the clavicular head of the pec major, also known as the upper chest. The second section is the sternal head of the pec major. This is subdivided into two different sections, which is your middle chest and your lower chest. Now that we've covered the anatomy of the chest, it's time to devise a plan to train it. We must consider the following. Frequency of our chest training. This simply means how many times per week will we be training chest. Volume of our chest training, which simply means how many sets or reps per week should we do for chest. Intensity. This means how much weight we are using for the desired amount of reps. Exercise selection. What exercises should we do and how should we structure them in our training program? Based on the research performed by Dr. Mike Isertel of Renaissance Periodization, he concludes that you should train your chest one to three times per week. Personally, I normally have two chest workouts per week, and I've had no recovery issues from doing so. Uh, if it was considered a legging body part, then I could potentially bump that training frequency up to three sessions per week and just see how I respond. As you might already be aware, volume is considered one of the main driving forces behind hypertrophy training, amongst other things. Before we understand this complex concept, we must first learn the terminology. Maintenance volume. This simply means how many sets per week do you need to train chest in order to not lose your current chest gains through atrophy, which simply means the loss of muscle. Although you won't be building any new muscle, MV is very important to know for two main reasons. During a deload week in a periodization program, a deload simply means decreasing volume to maintenance to allow for the muscle to get resensitized for future gains. Therefore, if you don't have an understanding of MV, you won't be able to adjust your deload accordingly. The second reason is to bring up lagging body parts. MV comes in handy for this because it allows you to adjust your chest training to maintenance and spend time putting volume in on other legging body parts without losing any of your current chest gains. According to Dr. Mike Isertel, maintenance volume for chest is around 8 sets of chest training per week. The next thing we need to know is the maximum adaptive volume, MAV. This is where most people will experience growth. For chest volume, this is around 12 to 20 sets per week, according to Dr. Mike Isertel. Now moving on to intensity. According to Eric Helms in his Muscle and Strength Pyramid book, he states that if your goal is hypertrophy, then 75% of your reps should be within the 6 to 12 range, with the remainder being allocated to the 1 to 6 and the 12 to 15 rep range. Now it's time for exercise selection. The first movement included in my chest training would be the bench press. Given the ability to load this exercise with a lot of weight, you are able to go heavy and really stimulate the deep muscle fibers of the chest to activate growth. For a greater range of motion, a dumbbell press would be a great substitute, however you do not have the same loading capacity as you do with the bench press. The second exercise that I would include in my chest program would be an inclined dumbbell press. Given the increased range of motion and the recruitment of the stabilization muscles, this is a great way to really target and isolate the upper chest given how the fibers run. The third exercise would be a fly, with any variation that is most comfortable for you. Here I chose the machine fly due to the mind-muscle connection I'm able to develop with my middle chest when performing it. This will be an individual preference as some people might prefer a cable or a dumbbell version of the same movement. The final exercise would be a dip, as this exercise runs in the same line as the lower chest fibers. This is a great way to include a bodyweight exercise in your program to help build your raw strength. Here I'm able to do it unassisted, however if you struggle with this exercise then try to find an assisted machine. Once you're able to perform 12 to 15 reps at ease, start wearing a weighted belt to increase the difficulty of this exercise. Alright guys, uh, that wraps it up for the Science Applied video. I hope you really enjoyed this type of video. Um, there's definitely going to be more coming uh, in terms of the uh, Science Applied stuff. Uh, I'm really starting to get interested in it and uh, yeah, so I hope I educated you guys, I hope it gave you some uh, value with this video. Uh, it took me a lot of work and it took me a lot of time, so I would appreciate um, any feedback that you would have. Um, but yeah, I'll be doing this for, uh, I want to try to do this for every single body part uh, that I uh, train. So I'll have tons of footage coming up 
and uh, look out for the next video. Um, it should be coming next week sometime. Um, I'll keep you posted on the date, but as of right now, it will be um, a week uh, from today. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on that, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and once again, uh, subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, thanks a lot. Peace.